Christmas is for children. First Christmas with our grandson was wonderful. We had a Christmas tree, then we lit up the candles. We were singing Christmas carols. My husband slipped out of the house. He had a big sack under the house. He had a fry pan and hammer. While we were still singing, he went round the house hammering. Greaves heard the noise. We all heard the noise. Greaves called out, Santa Claus is here, Santa Claus is here. He started to run from room to room, from window to window, and couldn't see anything. My husband put the bag at the front door and rang a bell. Oh, Greaves ran downstairs, opened the door, looked everywhere. No Santa Claus. Then he looked up in the sky, in the clouds. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. And he turned back to the sack because he was more interested in the big sack with the presents. He tried to pull in, he could not. We helped him. And he was screaming with the joy and opened the bag and looked all the presents. And we were so happy to see him, so happy and believing in Santa Claus. That was wonderful. This machine has come quite handy. I've done quite a bit of sewing on it. Some clothing for my daughter, a bit for myself. And I did quite a lot for my grandchildren, for, for their um, school carnivals. The first one I made for Chris was Captain Scarlet suit. And then uh, Robin, Batman and Robin. And uh, what else? It was. Yes, the main thing, the last one was Captain Cook's suit. Latvians have many different ways how to tell fortune in New Year's Eve. And one was in our kitchen with our grandson. You need the pieces of lead, bucket with cold water, and one old ladle. Then you boil the lead. When it's melted, you pour very quickly in a bucket with water and the lead goes in many different shapes and some tiny little bits. That means a lot of money. And when you take out the bigger pieces, everyone uses imagination, what it means, what it looks like. Everyone has imagination for different things. Then you hold up and you can look at the shadow of the wall. And sometimes it looks like a big ship. Means you will travel next year. Sometimes it looks like a car or animal or, oh, you can let your imagination go. My husband's funeral day was the saddest day of my life. 
the memorial service was held in our church from Zaire to Human Cemetery. After a short service, the coffin was lowered and the minister sprinkled a handful of soil from Latvia over the coffin as a last greeting from his homeland. We didn't leave the grave before the coffin and the grave was fully filled. And that was done by his friends as the last act of love for the deceased. them on the grave, some with a couple of words, some just was a moment of silence. The funeral service was attended by all our family members and friends living in Brisbane, and that helped me through the day. felt that it was important to pass our culture, customs to our grandson. We felt really it is our duty to do. He grew up on our memories, our stories about Latvia. We took grief to Latvian house to see Latvian plays and folk dancing. And he went every Saturday to Latvian school to learn, understand, and speak Latvian. We wanted him to know where his family came from and that he is a Latvian too. Es paraudīšu vicu. Mūtos ir aizgājīt vicus. Jāmu šādu, jāmu šādu. Then when he grow older, Katis, his Latvian relative, started to write him letters. And they started to exchange stamps. And Katis wrote to Grieves about Latvia, what he's doing there. And Grieves wrote to Katis about Australia. Then Grieve started to make this film about us. He went to Latvia and saw it with his own eyes. He did not see the Latvia we told him about. And now Grieve has his own memories and impressions of a Latvia that we I think never will see again. But that doesn't matter. Our motherland is a place that we have shared with him. And it still lives in all our hearts. <laughs> 